Uh, this group, uh, we were discussing how we can contribute to evidence-based policy making and some of the questions that we were trying to discuss were, you know, how do we build the linkages and networks with what kinds of people so that we can communicate our policy related messages efficiently and how do we understand the policy process and policies better and how do we identify opportunities of or windows uh, where we can influence or infuse evidence and then in influence the process. We actually started out discussing, okay, we keep talking about policy makers. Who exactly are we talking about, do we know? And we are trying to see if we could make a distinction between policy makers and decision makers. And then we said, okay, policy makers are not always necessarily the politicians and the ministers who are sitting in the ministries but usually they have these technical advisors and advisory committees and management boards and often consultants and experts to whom this is contracted out to. And those people actually formulate the policies while it is approved by you know, the political bodies like the House of Representatives, etc. And then we were also trying to identify at what levels this policy making happens and we said, Generally, it's the federal and regional levels where policies get made and implementation responsibility lies with the Voredas and the Kebelis. So we said, well, the strategy would be to develop relationships with these people, I mean, the technical, I mean, the experts, etc., who are actually involved in formulating policies. And then when we say develop relationships with them, maybe inform well, informal relationships, we are not starting on a blank slate. I mean, everybody is sitting here, most people sitting here do have existing social capital or network. So how do we take them to the next step? And then, yeah, get some of that network kind of intelligence. And then we also talked about possible windows, but we weren't really sure how that works in the Ethiopian context. We said, well, Ethiopia has taken on five-year planning now. But right now they are in the beginning of a plan, start of a plan, and we might have to wait for the next planning process, five-year planning, and that might be a bit too late to, um, to wait for. And then how do we engage these people? We said, at what stage do we engage them? Well, some felt we should start engaging them right from the planning process of research, formally or informally, or include them in your project steering committees or advisory committees, etc. Um, other thing we talked about was, you know, instead of having, or, or I don't know, not, in, I would say, different options on how you can make this whole policy influencing process effective. We have started forming a national platform, bringing people together, yeah, holding meetings, large meetings, 50 people, etc. Or you could also target specific individuals or organizations who could take these messages out in a much more effective manner. Some examples we talked about were this Agricultural Transformation Agency, the Donor Advisory Group, or the possibility of identifying a national champion or two per country or per region or whatever who could help us do that talked about, started talking a little bit about communication and then what role media could play or professional associations could play, but we didn't come to any kind of conclusive uh, discussions about that.